Welcome and aloha. I am Mark Schlav, the host of ThinkTech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea to Korea to talk with my good friend, Young Moo Shin, the managing partner of SNL Partners, a law firm in Seoul. Young Moo is very knowledgeable and very experienced lawyer. Among his many professional accomplishments, he has been the president of both the Korean Bar Association and the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. I've asked Young Moo to share his inside view of recent events and issues in Korea. Welcome, Young Moo. It's, it's good to see you. How are you? Fine. Thank you, Mark. I'm very honored to be with you today. Well, thank you. I know you're very busy and it's early in the morning in Seoul. Yes, uh, eight in the morning, yeah. <laughs> uh, so let, let, let's get started because I really want to um, ask a knowledgeable citizen of Korea, like yourself, about current issues in Korea. And, let, and let's first, what has life been like in Korea, in Seoul, uh, under COVID, under the pandemic, what, what is life and the practice of law like in Korea? As is the case in other country, many other countries, Korea enforced, Korean government enforced very strong, strict social distancing requirement. So face-to-face uh, -face meeting was very limited, but lawyers, uh, normally came to office as compared to other employees, office employees who had some distant uh, working at home and uh, law practice is, has been affected as you can imagine. Face, face to face meeting was very limited and lawyers, we were not able to uh, make overseas trip. Mm. That would be, you can imagine what happened here. Right, how's the economy? What, how's the South Korean economy? Korean now? economy was affected severely. Governments put a lot of money into the market and as a result, we are experiencing very severe influence, uh, in inflation because of oversupply of money, as you can imagine. Oh. And certain business sectors, especially affected by distancing requirement, uh, they, they, uh, they incurred quite a damage and loss. It, so it, it, it sounds like very similar uh, to the United States and Hawaii, very similar uh, government uh, actions. Uh, are, are, are the people uh, of South Korea, it, how are they dealing with this? Are they, are, are they holding together? Um, are they united? Are there divisions? I mean, we, we experience a lot in that in the United States uh some type of di di divisiveness as a result political di divisiveness how is south korea holding up people wise uh yeah we had experienced quite a division greater division as compared before uh, uh in the past regional division uh and generation division was and the ideology division, that was the main division factors. But recently, gender division became more severe between men and women, especially on younger generation. So, is, so, well, I'm sorry, what, what does that mean? I mean, how, how does that affect people? You know, the... Because of gender division, the rate of getting married is very low. The men and women, the young men and young women, they don't get together very well. 
Oh, okay. And, That's um, yeah. And and it, are we hoping that things get better? I guess I I guess there's there's still hope, right? Yeah, I think it's it's up to the government, the leader of the Korea. You know, I I noticed in that you were a founder of of a group called Citizens Coalition for Social Justice. What what was that about? Oh, let me explain the background first. I returned to Korea in early 1980 from US after completing my advanced studies and getting some practical training at the US law firm. And I for my setup studied my own firm in Korea named Shin and Kim, which grew one of the top three law firms in Korea in a short period of time. At that time, I actually influenced by US law firm. Shin and Kim was the first law firm, adopt, Korean law firm, adopting Western style partnership arrangement. In that agreement, in order to be more attractive to young, younger uh, attorneys in Korea, I made a retirement age at 65, even including founder himself. I was founder. At the age of 65, I retired. After that, I ran for presidency of KBA, Korean Bar Association. And during the term of two year term of presidency of KBA, I really enjoyed doing a different job, not law practice for profit or money, but for social justice in a way. You know, public interest related work. I really enjoyed the job I performed at that, that time. That influenced me. Oh, being a senior advisor to Shin and Kim, I can do something more important thing for Korea. That's why I thought about forming an NGO. At that time, does really the when I was younger, Korea society has more uh, uh, mobility, social mobility. Then later on, it gradually decreased and lowered at the point where young people didn't have any fair opportunity to compete for success. Mm. So the first priority was to do the NGO called Social Justice, Citizens Coalition for Social Justice was the first thing is to reduce corruption and to strengthen the rule of law in Korea to even the playing field, especially for younger generation. Second, objective was so to contribute in re, uh, educational reform in Korea so that youngsters can devote to develop their talent and to enjoy their lives doing whatever they really enjoy, you know, that those two main objectives are the goal of our NGO. It, it, uh, but as you may imagine, I am quite frustrated because, you know, rule of law, we experience quite a backward. And uh, it, yeah. Backward. <laughs> Let me ask you about that, because there was a, been a lot of news recently about South Korea's National Assembly 
stripping prosecutors of investigatory powers. What's that all about? I mean, is, is that what you're talking about? Yes, I include that also. That's the worst, worst thing we have experienced today. What is that about? You know, prosecutors are quite capable professionals who has law degree, passed the bar exam in Korea, licensed attorneys. And they are together with judges in Korea. They are the two uh, important bodies implementing very important part of rule of, rule of law. And as prosecutor's job has become more important, their power, exercise of power, sometimes abused. Mm. That's the point where the ruling party wanted to limit their power. But they went too far. The prosecutors has uh, two important jobs. One is investigation, the other one is prosecution, including attendance and oral hearing at court. That those powers cannot be uh, reduced or changed in order to maintain rule of law in Korea. But the ruling party and some of them were worried we worried about for themselves. They made some, many people in Korea had suspicion about, they wanted to avoid prison. Ah, okay. So there, there's a, a self-interest within politics, within politicians, and they're worried about the prosecutors finding out some bad things they've done. Now, it, 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 it's been mentioned that a lot of prosecutors resigned. Are, are there any prosecutors left? What's the status of prosecutors? There was, yeah, initially at first stage, a lot of prosecutors wanted to express their resignation, but it was reduced gradually and only a few resign and most of them remain. And you know, the act become effect four months later, the passage. So they have four months, actually. They wanted to do their job efficiently and effectively during the four months. So they are very eager now mm. to find out, investigate, and prosecute <laughs> wrongdoings committed. I see. So the, the, the legislative act actually rebounded <laughs> in a way that uh, they weren't, and the, the legislators weren't anticipating. Uh, of course, I wonder how it'll, you know, what, what the result will ultimately be. Uh, yeah. Uh, I hope it will be normalized during the during this government or later when what? majority of national assembly is transferred to ruling party. Now well, they are possible to amend the law. Well, we'll watch that. That'd be very interesting. Yeah see what happens, but it sounds like you got some dedicated prosecutors that, uh, uh, you know, are really looking to uh, do the right thing. And, th and that's, that's, you know, that's important. Um, now, uh, you, you recently had a new president, Yoon Suk Yul, elected. Uh, yeah. what, what's that? I mean, how did he get elected? And what's, what are his plans for uh, Korea. He, he, as an attorney general on the Moon's government, he, he stand up for justice. 
Ah. He didn't comply with some uh, kind of pressure given by the ruling party or the, uh, maybe, maybe pre he not directly by President Moon, but he didn't follow the intent of the ruling party. So he got quite a respect from the Korean people in short period of time. He got suffered a lot, including some kind of sanction given by the Minister of Justice on the prison moon, but he fight against it successfully. So in such a short period of time, Attorney General became a most favorite candidate for president. It's, a, it's really a good lesson. And this would be the first time forever in history in Korea. So he, he is now the president. And that, I mean, what you're telling me is actually very hopeful. Uh, and it shows that, that Korean people are really watching this closely and that they want somebody <clears throat> respectful and follows the law. Uh, yeah. That sounds really good. <laughs> yes, we are very encouraged and hopeful too. One of the things that President Yoon mentioned was an audacious deal for oh. North Korea. What, what's that? Oh, that is, if North Korea abandoned nuclear arms, then South Korea will do its best to have North Korea be successful economic, economically, and North Korean people will enjoy, enjoy uh, uh, their life, lives. So it's 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 a proposal. Is it a has it been formalized or is it just that's what he's talking about at this orally, point? Orally, orally committed, okay. but uh, it can be formalized depending on the progress of the situation. Now, uh, President U.S. President Joe Biden just was in South Korea and met with President Yoon. How did that go? How was that meeting and how did the people of Korea look oh, at that? It was great, actually. The visit of US Biden was timely, only 10 days after inauguration of new president. And Biden was very uh, good in making a visit to Samsung uh, electronics company and I had a meeting with, with uh, Hyundai Motor. In addition to political gesture, he wanted to have both uh, strengthen the uh, ties between two countries and uh, give some uh, influence to North Korean government by ensuring the secret, national security of Korea and economically, the US and Korea will make more stronger alliance. So it, it's, it, it sounds like uh, Korean people were, felt positive about yes. Biden's uh, trip to Korea. It sounds like it was a positive step for seeing yes. the, Okay, that's Very good. And, and hopeful for the future and, relationship. And, and, and the issues basically are economic in North Korea uh, that President Biden are, th those are important issues for President Biden to address for Korea. Yes. I see. Now, we had a prior president who uh, had a relationship with uh, Kim Jong-un in North Korea. How, how, do, how do the citizens of South Korea think about that? Uh, President Trump's relationship with Kim Jong-un? Uh, most Korean people 
Trump's effort was not fruitful at all. He was deceived by Kim Jong-un in a way. And uh, his approach was unrealistic. Ah, so he, he got fooled. He got taken advantage of. And yeah. he, he, he didn't see. And, and that's the, the Korean citizen's viewpoint uh, of that. Oh, Mr. Moon, former president Mr. Moon, tried uh -huh. to persuade Mr. Trump to be a friend of North Korea. I see. Deceiving him, North Korea doesn't have a and atomic uh, uh, nuclear power, nuclear energy bomb. And even if it has in the process of developing it on up to final stage, we, we can persuade successfully North Korean leader to abandon it. But that's not the case at all. Uh, well, I mean, what do, the, what do the people of South Korea think about North Korea's goals and strategies uh, on the uh, you know on the korean peninsula are do the, do south koreans believe that north korea will you know be a friend or use nuclear weapons what what's the what 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 is the viewpoint we cannot exclude the possibility of north korea using nuclear uh towards south you know, you know, so we have to be very careful. Uh, North Korea cannot compete with South Korea. North Korean people in general are the same as South Korean people. Basically, only the leading group, they enjoy quite a privilege and wealth. They are enjoying their lives under the uh, sacrifice of general <laughs> public in North Korea, you know. Yeah, so the privileged few of North Korea take oh. advantage of that privilege. Yeah. I see. And do the, do the people in South Korea ever believe that there will be re reunification? Or, or do they really want it? I mean, wh wh what's the reality of that, of that picture? Reunification, yeah. yes, no, do they really want it? Does... Event, eventually, we'll be reunified. We don't know what, when it will happen, but most Koreans still want to have Korea reunified. If reunified, Korean people will be out of any threat of war. You know, we can develop more efficiently national economy you know north korea has a quite a labor young labor south capital and technology so combining it will be very good, much better so it's so, still something that is hoped for the future and the bringing the people together with their different talents would would be a great thing for all the Korean people. That's what I hear you telling me. Yes, yes. But only the leader of North Korea doesn't want to do that, to enjoy his regime. So there may, there has to be some sort of change uh, in the leadership. Uh, and, 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 and you would, the people of South Korea would welcome reunification on the right terms is, is what I hear you telling me. Basically, yeah. But the younger generation has somewhat have somewhat different view. Some of them, uh, oh, we we if we reunify, we have to give a lot of economic assistance to North. Then we are suffering. We'll be we should be, get suffering. That is the some of the worry younger generation have. But so, that's not the majority, I think. So minor, minority view. There, there, there's still a long way to go, it sounds like. Yeah, it's a long but, way. But it's, still, it's still a hope for the future. Yes. 
Okay, and and it's something that most Koreans, it, you have this hope, but they realize realistically it'll take a long time. I yeah, I I think so. Uh, the average North Korean people will will be hopeful for reunification. They can because they can be better off on the reunified Korea. Okay. Their life living standard will get improved. Let me ask you about North Korea uh, and the COVID pandemic. What, what what do we really know about it? What do you know anything more about it that's happening <laughs> than than we do over here? No, North Korea is very uh, peculiar country. No flu, flu, flow, free flow information at all. So we don't know anything about what's happening exactly there. I we see. know there is a COVID. It has a quite a uh, uh, important thing for them to cure, but they don't have good facility and medicine and inspection equipment, et cetera. So, but, but South Korea has offered to help, right? Yeah, but they didn't say anything yet. No answer yet. Is, is, there, is that a, a possibility you think, or is, is, is that not gonna happen? Depending on the progress, they are receiving quite assistance from China. If that turns out to be not good enough, that that time they will ask for Korean South Korea to give some help. Do you, do you think they're afraid to do that? Do you think they're worried that if they ask for help, it'll make them look weak? Uh, they didn't say anything yet. I see. Okay. All right. So we're you're that's still out there on the table. Possibly that could help to bring. Korea's more friendly relationship. Yeah. Okay. Now we we have about a minute left, and um, I'd be interested. Oh if yeah. There are are there any Korean words of wisdom, like a a Korean motto or something from Korea that you would could share with us uh, today? A friend is a true friend in difficult times. Ah. Uh. Uh, as we experienced Korean War and US led the alliance to help Korea to overcome the war and recovery thereafter of South Korea. We believe US is really a good friend of, true friend of South Korea. And, and that's Korean words of wisdom. Yes. Uh, is there, how, how do you say that in Korean? Uh, <laughs> 어려울 때 친구가 진짜 친구. Okay, a friend, a true friend is a friend. Is a real friend. Real I, I'm sorry, say that one more time, please. In, in Korea, 어려울 때 친구가 진짜 친구. And in English. English, uh, uh, direct translation would be a friend at a difficult time is a real friend. Mm. I like that. I like that motto. I like that words of wisdom. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, thank you. Young, thank you. Young Lushen, I appreciate your time and sharing your knowledge with us and your expertise. So I uh, look forward to the next time we can actually see each other in person. Oh, yes, either in Hawaii or uh, in Seoul. That'd be great.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.